There are banks that are using affiliates or intermediary branches to attend auctions to try to buy a home for under 60% of the value. Banks are fast filing against those who don't pay and evicting them, but they're in no rush to file against the squatters. My situation can't wait. My family is bankrupt. I have two minors and a family to feed, and the bank for seven years has been stealing from me. It's been sucking my blood. There are 12 million people at risk of social exclusion, and that could mean an important increase of those people living on the street. A person on the street has gone through a process of loss. They lose their family, their job, and they lose their money, their health. They lose their self-esteem, which is the most important. Cold, cold, so cold. But not here. Here there's coffee, and here they feed me. And I get to clean up. It's very good. If a bank wants to take away an evicted family's home, they have two ways of doing so. Going through the legal real estate auction process or reaching an out-of-court settlement through notaries. Pasan los años, pero sigo sin crecer. Tengo rabia en vez de sangre. Cada nuevo amanecer. No sé en qué creer. Ya no tengo fe. Me han dejado tirado. El mundo va a pique. Que me expliquen lo de los mercados. In the legal auctions, in the first auction, the house is valued at 100 percent. In the second auction, 75 percent, and in the third auction, 60 percent. However, for notarial auctions, the minimum value, at least until recently, was up to the notary. I have a case of a Peruvian woman. They auctioned off her apartment before the law reform through the notarial process, and it was awarded to Benesto. In this case, for 30% of the auction price. I think the debt was around 200,000, and Bonesto got the apartment for 75,000 or something like that. The leftover debt was around 150,000. Some banks took advantage of the legal loophole to take over apartments for a symbolic price of one euro, thus making the eviction of families a big business. Banesto is getting a return on real estate. They auction it off through the notarial process and they sell it for more money and get a better return. In this case, through the legal process, we're going to talk about unjust enrichment. We're going to try to challenge this auction, this sale. But for now, Banesto is moving forward with this system. It worked for this woman and I imagine she's not the only one. What's more, Banesto is the bank that is mainly using the notarial process for auctions. Offering a minimum price at the auction for homes that are not awarded is not a legal change, only a recommendation by the General Council of Notaries. In fact, if there are several bids, they don't have to offer the minimum price. There are banks that are using affiliates or intermediary entities, screen entities, frontmen, to attend auctions to try and bid for less than 60% of the value. This legal trick is permitted by the Council of Ministers which makes us think that the government puts the privileges of financial entities over the rights of families. Most families were not aware of this condition, of the possibility that when they stopped paying, their home would go to auction and they would award it to a bank for so little money. So their first reaction is surprise, their second reaction is outrage, then from there, a huge sense of powerlessness, of being ripped off. They feel that they've been deceived. They signed a mortgage and thought when the apartment was delivered, the debt would be settled. It's like a popular estate and something that was common to all, and then they found out that this was not the case. 
For Javier, this regulation that determines the minimal price for the apartment up for auction is still not the solution for the drama of these families. The regulation for adequate minimums for this increase the solution would be to legalize the non-payment retroactively for all mortgages, or at least for those in which the debtor is one of good faith. If there was an involuntary non-payment due to unemployment, a loss of economic activity, salary reduction, in all those cases of a good faith debtor, they have to impose, even for contracts that are already signed, the non-payment relationship. Auctions have become a business for banks which take over homes of evicted families for much less money than the mortgages that they had granted. Neighborhood 26, Team 1. The 800 volunteers who signed up for the initiative set up by the Madrid Town Council to find out how many people are sleeping on the streets of the capital of Madrid are dividing up the work. Embajadores, Team 2. I'm going to go down the streets of a neighborhood to see if there are any homeless people, interview them, ask them how long they've been homeless, how they're handling it and take interest in their lives so they feel supported in some way by society. Enrique is the coordinator for one of the groups. His group is responsible for the city center district. If you want, we can go up in two groups, in pairs. We can meet in Mayor, go towards the left, and then come back down and then hit the next two streets. Just like them, there are another 140 work groups that will comb the 21 districts of the capital. Through a questionnaire, they aim to find out not only approximately how many homeless there are, but gather data related to gender, age, health, and their vital circumstances. We go in pairs. One person has the questionnaire. You calmly introduce yourselves, hey, we're here to do this, what do you think? And while one of you keeps the conversation going, the other person can write down the answers without any problem. The objective of this initiative is clear. The organizations and the town council work better by knowing the data about the homeless on the street and also about issues like assistance, placement, service centers, and so this works more adequately. With the crisis, insecurity, lack of safety, and risk for many people to end up on the street has increased. Interman Oxfam has just published a report that says poverty and social exclusion in Spain could drastically increase if they don't change the austerity policies. In 10 years, the number of poor people would reach 18 million. That's 38% of the population. There are a lot of people in a vulnerable situation. There are 12 million people at risk of social exclusion, and this could mean an important increase in homeless people. We think that there are more people on the street, but we feel the worst is yet to come and the number could increase. Well, having spent my life working and now to live like this, well, it hurts. Some have more, some have less, but we're all equally people. There's always someone who benefits from the problems of others. That's the case of the pisos patada. When a home unclaimed after an eviction, people break down the door, change the lock, say it's their home, and then do business with them. 
They are facing this problem in the Madrid neighborhood called San Cristobal de los Angeles. Just the day before yesterday or yesterday, they squatted in another apartment. It's true there are judicial eviction orders, but they squat the apartments again. Problems are still being generated in the buildings when there are four squatter apartments. People are scared to talk because they're being threatened, and it's a situation that is a little unsustainable. Three years ago, the local neighbors started to realize there was a problem. At that time, there were 68 squatter homes. Today, there are more than 500. This is not only happening in San Cristobal, this is something that is happening all over Madrid. But the problem is people don't want to talk. They think, well, the neighbors are scared, that their home might lose value, or they don't want the neighborhood to be shown here. Today, it's a problem of the public administrations, the police, and the courts. This new model of unscrupulous people who take advantage of other people's needs, squatting homes and charging them for homes of people who were evicted because they couldn't pay. One person's problems become someone else's business. Investigations reveal that this practice is controlled by a gypsy mafia who rents or grants the property. Some charge a thousand euros, 300 euros, and even up to 6,000 euros, or whoever wants a home, they rent them with a contract, and every month they collect the rent and make money. The neighbors condemn the attitude of the banks who are the real owners and who have to fulfill their obligations. The banks are quick to file against those who don't pay and evict them, but they're in no rush to file against the squatters and totally neglect their obligations as owners of these homes. They don't pay the community fees, they don't care, and they don't file a report. Meanwhile, the neighbors see how the squatters hook the electricity up to the meters, and there are increasingly more bad debtors who don't pay the community fees. Meanwhile, there are people getting rich by renting apartments of evicted families on account of the bank and public administration's passivity. Cold has hit the streets of Madrid and with it the town council's winter campaign has begun. Samur Social Services has intensified its work with one objective. The homeless people can spend the night in one of the 2,021 beds available in the seven hostels participating in the campaign. A temporary solution but very comforting for those who don't have a place to protect themselves from the low temperatures. Samur Social Services, good afternoon. It is estimated that in Madrid there are around 2,000 homeless people. That's why Samur Social Services is active all year round, but in the winter it reinforces its work teams. From November 25th through March 31st, there are 12 street teams and 12 mobile units available. But how do they work? An example is the people on Calle Mayor. It's one of the most important streets of Madrid. A person sleeping on the corner, leaning against a bench. They called 112, the emergency line from Madrid, asking for help. He would be attended to by the people in this room. Hello, Samur Social Services. Can I help you? Then the staff, with this information, will activate, in this case, one of the mobile units or the street teams that are waiting for the staff to activate their team. The mobile unit will go to the place where the person is sleeping and will offer him the shelter services. The crisis is causing cutbacks in all services, but they have not been affected. A little more than one million euros has been and still is allotted for this service. The money is still used for this because we are the last protection network. That is, under us, all there is is nothing, just the street. A person on the street has gone through a process of loss. They lose their family, their job, and they lose their money, their health. They lose their self-esteem, which is the most important. Marta and Miguel make up one of the social SAMR services teams that drive around the city at night and attend to between 10 and 12 people. And is it hard for people to accept your help? 
Pues hombre, hay, hay gente que, que no hace... Well, some people don't use any of the resources, accommodation, not even day centers or dining halls. Then there are people who arrive for the first time and they've already given themselves to the idea that you're there to help them. Sometimes moments of tension are experienced. There are times when they might be very nervous. Yes, especially if it's something very recent. Right. If it's something quite new and they still haven't accepted and this nervousness and fear comes together due to this new situation of living on the street and you invade their territory, their small space, even though it's on the street, it's their space. So they might feel a little invaded. It's happened to us and they get that attitude like, no, no. And then we have to come back at some other time so that they are calmer, of course. Yeah, and leave since it's not a very favorable situation. Now we're going to see someone who we've known for a while. He begs at a church door. And we're going to suggest that he go to a homeless shelter and try and insist a little more to see if this is the day that he'll accept going. The truth is, it's really cold outside. Today is not their lucky day. The person they were looking for is not there, but they find someone else begging at the church door. And after being offered shelter, he assures them that he has a place to stay. They have to continue the route. Turn left here if you can. In the neighborhood of Lavapiés, they find someone else who could qualify as a homeless person. <laughs> After a 10-minute conversation, explaining to him about the different possibilities of aid, the man prefers to stay on the street. Sometimes the evicted family business takes place before the family is actually evicted. This is the case of the land fraud clause. Mortgages go up or down based on the Euribor. But this clause makes it so the interest paid by families for the loan doesn't go below the amount stipulated when the deeds are signed. This is the case of Mohamed Samadi. He's fighting against the BBVA to make this change. My situation can't wait. My family is bankrupt. I have two minors and a family to feed. And the bank, for seven years, has been stealing from me. It's been sucking my blood. It was abusing me. In 2008, four years ago, on several occasions I requested and I begged for negotiations. But the banks wouldn't listen. The Bank of Spain said he was in the right. But now the judges have to declare whether the sentence is relevant. The courts can't. They are obliged to dictate a sentence to eliminate this land clause for all the families that are affected by this clause. It will be a precedent, and it will hurt the BBVA very much. It will cause them incalculable damage. A 100,000 mortgage at 30 years, the land clause means an extra expense of more than 1,000 euros per year. I think I made a huge and valuable effort to be able to pay the mortgage, something the bank knows. I've been a good payer and I've always shown good faith to pay the mortgage. And now I've got two debts, the bank debt that I have to pay and an external debt generated by the bank, which has driven me to request small loans for 500, 600, 800, 200 euros. The BBVA bank has offered Mohammed the chance to renegotiate his mortgage conditions. But if he accepts, he is obliged to drop the charges. In spite the fact that it will harm him, he refuses to renegotiate, because for him it's not just his fight, but one for society. 
I'm not going to allow the injustices committed by the bank to do dirty business through the hard work of a family's dream to simply guarantee a roof over their head. The politician's permissiveness once again puts the bank's business with the least fortunate before the social justice. During the months that the winter campaign lasts, twice a day a bus brings homeless people who go to the meeting point voluntarily. And they go because they know that here there are 150 beds and hot coffee waiting for them. Mohammed has been working for this center during the winter months for six years in charge of welcoming the people and organizing them so there is enough time to attend to everyone. They arrive and they're signed up at the table. And then they go to the check room to check their things. And then they go to dinner. Afterwards, we give them a towel and soap for the shower and a bed. Whoever comes to the shelter, which is exclusively open for the winter campaign, has the right to a bed, dinner, breakfast, basic health care attention, and social advice if they need it. It's one of the best options there are for the poor or for those who have problems working or don't have anything. I feel good here because I'm welcomed. I feel okay here because it's like my home. My life is really bad. Before I slept on the street. Now the town council and Samur Social Services have helped me uh, to sleep here. It's a good thing. I sleep in the shelter and I have food. I'm better. How many days do you come? For one week, always, and seven days before. Now they change your card and... And what do you do here? Sleep, eat? Yes, yes, and shower, and change, clean up. All good then? Yes, sure. Spaniards, foreigners, the sick, and people who have been poor for a while, people who lost their home overnight, everyone has a place here. Sometimes it's a mix that causes problems and misunderstandings since people are frustrated because of the situation that is still hard for them to accept. It's a center that demands very little. Everyone has a place. First, we take in the people that can't handle the cold as well. And according to this and the person's profile, we sign them in. And we don't demand anything from them, just get them out of the cold. We can't, and we don't. I sleep on the street, and here it's very good. Cold, cold, so cold, but not here. Here there's coffee, there's everything. They feed you, you get cleaned up. It's all good. You really want to work, farming, and that's it. We're a company that has been working with banks for 10 years to carry out evictions. Since we have access to their database, a few years ago we decided to expand our business and set up a real estate agency. This is what the head of Glown Financial Services said, a real estate agency pioneer in apartments owned by evicted persons, a practice that today has grown. Today, the natural setting for looking for a home to buy or rent is the Internet. And maybe there is a greater presence of web pages in these last few months, but especially those run by financial entities. The bursting of the real estate bubble has made banks become the owners of thousands of apartments that they have to get rid of through their web portals or real estate agencies.
Right now, the banks in Spain have become the big real estate agencies, the biggest ones in the country. They have a stock of around 250,000 to 300,000 homes, including all kinds of products. They have everything from buildings with just a framework to buildings that are practically completed or about to be completed and are put on sale. Also, used products that come from developers that had them in their portfolio. And also from the execution of mortgages, which have been carried out since 2008. The banks keep the apartments through the auctions, sometimes paying less than half the property value. That's why the price drop is so notable. The truth is the bank's apartments are slightly less expensive than what you can find on the market. But most especially, and in most cases, the mortgage is equivalent, meaning that the banks are not lowering their prices aggressively or dramatically now. But what they're doing is, if you buy an apartment from a bank, even though you buy it with a lesser discount than what you'd find on the street, at least the bank will finance it for you. The banks are now the sellers of the same apartments that for years they loaned money to a family to purchase it. Money that many families have not been able to pay and now see how their homes are being sold for less than what they paid for it.